Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you see these stories that we are mentioning of the previous prophets. For you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is a point of comfort. It is a point of strengthening for you. So that you know that your brethren, the messengers who were before you, they went through similar problems just like you are facing today. وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَمَوْعِظَةٌ وَذِكْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says every time we have mentioned the stories of those before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is there so that your heart can be strengthened as a point of comfort for you, knowing that those before you have also been through similar to what you are going through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the same way that he has granted a lesson for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a point of comfort, may he give us also lessons by reading the stories of the past nations, seeing what they were involved in and they were destroyed. You know, if petrol mixed with firewood makes a huge flame, or it made a huge flame last year. Do we think that 10 years down the line, the one who mixes that petrol with the same firewood will not get a huge flame? That is being absurd. So if two things put together resulted in a huge inferno, the same two things put together a hundred years later will result in the same inferno. The same applies. If deeds of the previous nations resulted in their destruction, do you think if we engage in the same deeds, it will not result in our destruction. Allahu Akbar. Think about that example. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences one of the most beautiful surahs in the world or in the Quran, one of the most beautiful surahs that have ever been mentioned on this globe or in creation. We are now relating to you the best of stories. Why the best of stories? Let me tell you, we don't have as much time as one would have liked to go through the details of the, ex of the lessons we learned from Surah Yusuf. But we will go through a few. Why? Because almost everyone's life is directly or indirectly affected by Surah Yusuf. Let's start drawing examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with a dream and he ends with the interpretation of that dream. And in the middle, there is another dream that is mentioned and its interpretation is also there. So the dream is... إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ Oh my father, I have seen 11 stars, the sun and the moon prostrate to me. That was good news. The father was a Nabi, Ya'qub alayhi salatu wa salam. He knew that this is some goodness. This means Allah will gather us all together one day. But he did not tell that to his son. Rather, he told his son, knowing that this is a great gift. Don't relate this good news to your brothers. Because they might plan and plot against you. They might become jealous of you. What do we learn from this? Those were the children of a Nabi. And something good, he told his son, don't tell the others. When something good happens to us, we don't even have to tell our family members sometime until we've achieved something. Sometimes we're planning to go somewhere. Who says that you have to inform everyone? No, it depends on how important that journey is. You don't have to always inform everyone of your next move. You don't have to tell them about your business deals. You don't have to tell them about anything. You should seek assistance in fulfilling your needs by being secretive to a certain extent. You don't have to tell everyone everything because shaitan is bad. They might be good. <laughs> shaitan is an outright clear enemy against man. So even if a person does not want to be jealous, you find that sometimes shaitan puts in a spear, an arrow, in interferes and makes a person jealous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us jealous. When a person has a child, for example, a little baby, for those who are newly married who have children, alhamdulillah, if the baby sleeps all night, you don't have to tell the whole world, you know what, that baby, mashallah, sleeps all night. From that night on, the baby might not sleep because Ain and the evil eye might attack that baby. You can say, look, that's a normal child. You know, they sleep. You know how children sleep. So you haven't lied. 
Alhamdulillah. At the same time, when, it, when something good happens, you don't have to tell everyone. And if you tell them, make sure they say, MashaAllah, in front of you, don't be shy to say, say MashaAllah. Let them say it. So what? Alhamdulillah. We will save ourselves. In fact, even in the surah, we will see how Yaqub alayhi salatu was was worried about the evil eye befalling the fact that he had children, huge, beautiful, handsome children, all walking together, united. He didn't want people to see that. So when they were entering Egypt later on, he told them enter separately. Why? So that people can't affect you with the evil eye. Allahu Akbar. The evil eye is true. The hadith says, al haqqun. It is true. It can affect a person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But remember one thing, not every sickness that you have is the evil eye. Sometimes everything we have, people say, you know, someone did magic on me, man. You know, I, I don't understand that someone is jealous of me, man. Sometimes it's just a health ailment. Maybe you've eaten a bit too fast and some gastric movements in the stomach and you think there is jadu or you think there is a little bit of magic that someone has engaged in. May Allah protect us. A little bit of enos will do the trick, inshallah. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us here in Surah Yusuf that we need to know who to talk to and how to talk, what to tell, who to tell. Then this Nabi had these children and these children, subhanallah, they were the children of the Anbiya. Nabi Yaqub alayhi salam, do you think he gave them an up upbringing that was anything less than perfect? No, it was a perfect upbringing. But on top of that, they planned to kill their brother. Imagine. That means sometimes jealousy levels with, between brothers and family and blood can get to the point of wanting to, to eliminate someone. May Allah protect us. It is haram. It is prohibited. So one of the older brothers felt a little bit you know, a little bit remorseful and he felt a bit shy. He says, La taqutulu Yusufa wa alquhu fi ghayabati jubbi. Don't kill him. Throw him into a pit and someone will pick him up and maybe they'll take him to a far off land. So what they did is they hatched a plan. They went to their father. They told their father that, Ma laka la ta'manna ala Yusufa wa inna lahu lanasihun. Arusilhu ma'ana ghada. What's wrong with you? They're telling their father. Why don't you release Yaqu Yusuf alayhi salam? Release him with us tomorrow and we will go, we will graze the flock and so on. We will play and we will come back. You know what the father says? I fear if I send him with you, it will make me sad, number one, because he will be away from me. You'll take him for the whole day. And there is a possibility that whilst you're not watching, a wolf might eat him. They used the same plan. They took him, they released him into that pit and they came back with the false blood on a shirt and they said, you know what? A wolf ate him whilst we weren't watching. Imagine. The same thing the father suggested, they took it up and they actually came back with the same words. How many of us are fooled by our children sometimes? It's a, there is a possibility. If a Nabi could be told that by his own children, do you think our children don't lie to us? They come to us from madrasa later on in the afternoon and say, you know what? Today that sheikh, that imam, that teacher, he did this and that. We roll our sleeves and we want to beat up that imam by believing a child five years old. Imagine. Yet we don't realize that that could be a lie. Go out, defend the teacher. Say, look, if that's what he did, that's your teacher. Why did you engage in something bad? May Allah protect us all. There's so many examples that we could actually give, but let's move on. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he was thrown into this pit and they picked him up. When they picked him up, what does Allah say? Wa asarruhu bida'ah. They regarded him as merchandise. And they said, no, this will make money out of this. You know, sometimes when we pick up lost property, what do we do? Very valuable. You pick up a blank check. It tells you a million rands. What do you do? Very tempting. May Allah grant us iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can hand it back. You know what happens sometimes like what we read in the newspapers in countries like these you find you hand back a large amount of money to the cop shop to the policeman sometimes it disappears from there but don't worry so long as you didn't steal it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us so the same applies here these people what do we learn from them they looked at an innocent boy a very handsome man they said no we'll make money out of this come bring him into this they sold him at the next market someone bought him a very wealthy man bought him and in a nutshell, what had happened, the wife of this minister of Egypt had an evil intention when she saw this handsome man, handsome Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam. She says, you know what? He's a worker for us. He works for us. 
Let me advance sexually. How many of us are guilty of making sexual advances at the workplace? Let's be honest. This lesson comes from Surah Yusuf. Whether it is male or female is besides the point. The lesson is don't ever make sexual advances that are haram, especially at the workplace. If someone is working for you and don't think that this person here is actually under me. So let me try my luck. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Look at the example. Who would have guessed that we learned this from the surah? So Surah Yusuf, the Nabi of Allah, was actually someone attempted to lure him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. And thereafter, this lady became so upset, so angry, that then the people, the other ladies, obviously everyone speaks about that lady because she is the minister's wife. She is supposed to have been a role model for everyone. The other ladies began to speak and they said, you know, this lady here, she actually wants to do something with her own workers. Imagine, may Allah protect us all. So she said, let me fix these ladies. They don't know how handsome this man is. So she prepared a little sitting for them and gave each one of them an apple with a knife. A fruit with a knife. And she told Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam because he was a worker. He had to obey the instructions. I want you to pass from here when they are all seated. As he passed, they were so engrossed in looking that they cut their hands. Allahu Akbar. Imagine how handsome he must have been. They were so engrossed in looking that they cut their hands and they said, Ma hadha bashara in hadha illa malakun kareem. This is no ordinary human being. This is an angel. This is an angel. Allahu Akbar. What do we learn from this? Let's draw a jewel from it. We learn from it that whenever our eyes and our gaze is not controlled and we happen to look at the opposite sex more than what we are allowed, in that case it will result in destruction of one way or another. Let me give you an example. Sometimes you're driving your motor vehicle and someone happens to pass quite good looking and you turn, you might bump the car in front of you. It can happen. Why? It's similar to cutting the hand. It will cause bodily harm, material harm. It will cause lots of harm. It's a fact. Sometimes if you engage in an act, you might end up with a huge disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So this is a lesson to say anyone who wants to follow that path, there is destruction coming your way. Do you know that we are taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you have wealth, a salary at the end of the month or wealth, and there is no barakah in it, no barakah at all. Ask yourself, you probably engaged in a sin. You probably oiling some of your bad habits, maybe casino, maybe gambling, maybe drinking, maybe nightclubs, maybe drugs, maybe a woman, maybe someone of the opposite sex. You need to pay money. You need to look after someone more than what Allah has shouldered upon you. How can there be barakah in your wealth? So if you find your money is running away quickly, leave the sins and you will find that 500 rands will last the whole month. You'll still have 450 inshallah. May Allah grant us barakah in our wealth. This is a very important lesson we learned from in Surah Yusuf as well.